can't remember. I can't. Re we actually did start. Oh yeah, I told Drina to shut up, didn't I? Uh, because um, I, we haven't started. Right, Drina, any news from you, darling? You upset her. <laughs> Got a very deep I voice, Drina. I don't know whether this is old news, but they got DNA from the nits that were in a mummy. Oh. No, I didn't know that. No, that no, not I'm... new. That new? Yeah. Yeah, it's new. Go on, tell us more. Well, they they, they must have. It, it's it said it was like a sticky subject sus, substance on the head, and they got DNA from it. Where's this, um, Drina? An outside or what? <laughs> Where were these from? It looked like a South American mummy, but I'm not oh. sure about that. So, in other words, what you're saying the the um, the, the 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 back end results of a um, a net has been or was on somebody's yes, head. And, that yeah, one. Right. yeah. My right, thanks for that, Gina. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Next time, you shut up. Um, right. I, I, you can take it, Drina. Don't worry. I, I've no you though. That's <laughs> good. That's good. <laughs> How did you know it was a South American mummy? Uh, she's been doing archaeology classes for a long time. It, it, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I just had that feeling. It was a small mummy, and it was yeah. it was brown. That's really helpful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> kind, of, kind of a South American. It's wearing color. a sombrero. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on, on the back of that, right? Yeah. Do you think there's anything else you want to say? No. no? That's it. Yeah. Thank by you. the way, you've got a beautiful smile. Can I just say <laughs> something, right? Uh, we we've got salt licks for the um for the sheep, right? Mm. Yeah. And um, I didn't know they'd already licked them, so I oh. I um I, I I licked the side of one of them, right? And, oh no. And then I was told that that they, <coughs> they've been licking that there. Um. So so don't lick things. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the animals have been licking. Then let's just go, let's finish that one. Claire, anything you'd like to say? No, I'm just, um, well, in my spare time, I'm going to read up about the new finds they found in Egypt. I've seen a little bit about there and I'm intrigued. What's that, the West Valley? Are, 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 these, are, these, the new, are, are these the new finds in, in regards to um, they found a mummy that they thought was a bloke? And it turned out it was a woman because there was a fetus inside. Is that the one? Yeah. And and also we're talking about the the wonderful discoveries um, uh, that, that we did the other a, a few weeks ago uh, with that wonderful city that was discovered. So yeah, yeah, I don't know if you actually did that lecture, but yeah. No, I um, think I did. <laughs> oh, oh, we we actually did that. Um, but uh, any, anyway, well, well done, um, Roger. Anything you'd like to say? Oh, right, here we go. Here we go. Go oh, on, Roger. Not, not, not yet. That makes a change. Thanks, Rog. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, don't, don't, Ro Roger, that's it. That's it. Good. Don't, don't leave. The, uh, the Chichester itinerary yet? Uh, uh, the Chichester itinerary is still... I have a map ordered this week, so I want to just cover all things around the area that's we not on the yeah. internet, and I'll get back to everyone then. Okay. Yeah, uh, Jessica, even though the trip is two months away, right? It, uh, Roger's getting really impatient, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna make sure it's okay for my lady. She's uh, got you know talking things. So be what lady boy or lady? I don't know. Right, lady, a young girl. Right, talking yeah. about lady boys, Jess. <laughs> Um, well, it's not archaeological what I want to share, but I thought it was quite an entertaining piece of news. Um, this cat here, take a good look Aww. at this cat. Yep. Um, there's a story this with this cat. Um, her name's Cleo, and she's been seen as a legend in the Eyes of Wales online. Um, she's been missing for two months uh, in a, from a home in Shropshire. <laughs> Um, but it turns out she's been staying in a hotel in the Bracken Beacons. Um, oh. They're not sure how she's made the five-hour trip, <laughs> but she's had a lovely breakaway and she's on her way home. Oh. Excellent. Yeah. I, I, oh. I, I, I need to see a doctor for a minute. Right, OK, Andy, <laughs> anything you would like to say? Uh, I saw an interesting article on the Lunchtime News about it. It's um, Andy Burley from um, Vindolanda. Oh yeah, is this the one about the the peat? Yeah, yeah. go on. Yeah, go yeah. On. about the, uh, the 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 because the climate change is drying out all the peat uh, bogs, uh, which of course is preserves 
um, a lot mm. of archaeology in remarkable conditions and won't be there. So he's saying that we need to uh, to excavate them and get as much mm. as we can out of them now, the ones we know of. I, I think it was 100 and something sites. I can't remember, 120 Ooh. odd sites, um, no. because it'll no. be gone soon and destroyed because of the Don't drying out. Hold, sorry. Hmm, Don't they hold CO2? Uh, mm -hmm. They do, yeah. He's, they're not draining them. They, 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 they're naturally draining because of the, the yeah. climate yeah. change. Yeah. But yeah, they are a big storage of, of CO2 as well. Yeah. Uh, he said it was too, too complicated to, to, to flood them and keep them moist. Yeah. But I don't think. Yeah. They, I, don't I, I, th I think yeah. obviously we need to monitor that one, Andy. Yes. Yeah. Difficult one, that one. Uh, the, 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 th the thing is, the thing is, uh, this, this is the point right i i've got um i've got a lot of archaeological work to publish and um we've got um we, we, we've got the archaeology here as you know mm. and um it, it's thinking well the archaeology that we've got here which is um of, of high importance doesn't need to be excavated um completely at this very moment we could do something this this year but obviously um you know, there are sites um, like the Burleys that they're saying that need to be looked yeah. at now and uh, is just trying to prioritise. And the one thing that is being, being completely missed out of the <laughs> um, um, is is coastal erosion. Yeah. And we're, we're losing we're losing a lot of stuff through coastal erosion. And uh, they, they talk about HS2 being about a thousand archaeologists working on it. That means that... Um, uh, the 3,000 archaeologists that um, are working in field archaeology, a third of them are just involved in one project. So you can yeah. imagine the low numbers of archaeologists that are available for other work. Mm. And, uh, mm. that's, that's what the Citizens Project was all about, though, wasn't it? And that, they, they shelved it. So. I, I, th I think, I think the, yes, Andy, I think, yes, yes, I can remember that going back a while ago. Um, yeah. Um, found, yes. Can I, I found out where the mummy is. Oh, Argentina. Oh, Argentina. Well done. Oh, good call. Yeah. Don't cry for yeah. me, Argentina. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Sorry. Right. Uh, right. Uh, well, well done, people. I'm glad you enjoyed the lecture today. Is there any questions? <laughs> right. Okay. Um, uh, Anne, Anne, just, just quickly say something. Anne, anything? No, nothing to say today. Sorry. Uh, thanks for that. It's in Argentina. That's good. Um, I was I was going to make a, a, a quite a, quite a fitting point in a moment, but um, anything you'd like to say, Pat? No, no, all's well. Um, Margaret, anything you'd like to say? Uh, well, I went to Castle Rigstone Circle on Saturday, Ooh. and uh, oh. somebody's dug that there were four or five big deep holes had been dug in the centre. What? Oh, what? Four or five deep holes. Somebody had dug deep holes. And wow. in one of them, there was placed some flowers. So I imagine somebody's put ashes in one of them. No, no. no. What? That, 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 that's completely against the law. Well, my, my, I had my friend with me who works for the archaeology group at, for the National Trust, and she took some photographs. Good. To show them when she got back. That that is absolutely terrible. It yes, that's what we thought. Well, that that's the whole point of having a, a protected scheduled ancient monument. It's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, that that is absolutely shocking. Hmm. Shocking. And uh, thanks for that. All oh, right. Okay. That that's put a bit of a downer on things. <laughs> thanks for that, Margaret. I really sorry, appreciate Margaret. that. I, I prefer I prefer um, I prefer Claire's mummies and um, um, Drina's nits, to be honest. Well, um, good thing that a national trust person was with me, so oh, yeah. maybe they'll get it looked at. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, Pete, anything you'd like to say, darling? Keep an eye uh, on Sam. I read your your column. Um, do, do you remember the reading rooms and the chapel that used to be on the road going down? That. That was part of Vicky Park. Yeah, the problem is the problem is the biggest problem is that with, with that Peter is that um, 
because because they're now gone it's not my remit to write about them but uh, that okay. well, could be something that me and P um me and richard could cover in the book yeah yeah please do i yeah. i do remember them Pete. i really really do i really I do. used the reading rooms a couple of times yeah that, and there was a, a little <clears throat> cottage below for the uh for the keeper hmm. oh right so that again pete there was a cottage below it was two oh. story the uh the, the well the chapel there that i believe it was a chapel first and then it became the reading rooms hmm. ah and do, do, you know, do you know one thing pete that was still standing in the 80s and uh it, was. it definitely was yes and it, that was an idea for a, a, a local museum but obviously that didn't yeah, happen either. it would have been ideal yeah it would have been ideal exactly and um Anyway, uh, thanks for that, Pete. I was gonna, I was okay. gonna, and uh, I thank, thanks for reading that. So next week, just, just so Jessica knows what we're doing next week, um, we are doing a um, an early Swiss lake village next week, which is our context, our chronology. But we'll be doing some early stuff anyway. Um, we are going to keep all the British stuff in chronology, but we'll want to look at a Swiss um, lake village uh, to just break things up a little bit. That's what we're going to do next week. And I, I just wanted, I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to, to say, say something. We, we're um, the, the the biggest problem is that we've got in archaeology is now that we've got to take choice. We, we've got to make choices over what archaeology that we can save and what we can't because we can't save it all. We don't have the resources. We don't have the um, we don't have the ability to save everything. So um, uh, you know the the Burleys are going to have to start thinking about. Um, um, what the priority is with with archaeological research up there, and um, mm -hmm. the thing is, the Burleys could stop excavating at Vindolanda because that's their property and it's going to be safe for the next thousand years. But they could then start excavating on other sites that 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 need to be excavated now because they've got the resources and the ability to do it. That's my only thing I would say. Yeah, that, the the one he was talking about was uh, a camp uh, nearby that's not not uh, a large fort, Roman fort that's not been excavated at all. Maximus yeah. something or other it was called. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Max, Maxima, Maximus, I think something yeah. like that. Yeah, because uh, he was using that as an example, wasn't he, with the, uh, the, where they yes. had the well and the, yes. the mound for the well was now sort of several feet above the ground level because it had, it had shrunk away because of the drainage. So. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah I, I agree. I agree. That's, that, that's all really fitting stuff. Mm. So, um, so today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to warn everybody that I've got to go off and get um, one of my dodgy tablets. And um, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, everybody, that uh, there's not going to be many images today. And the reason why there's not going to be many images is that most of the animals that we're going to be talking about, being that they're extinct, we've got no images of what they look like anyway. i just got to get some liquid a minute. Hang on, bear with me a second. <coughs> Hello, little creatures. Hello, goats. Right, so sorry. Archaeology once, uh, it was once the goat told me that the length of the foot, four times the length of the foot, gave you the height of the animal up to the hip. Mm. Thanks for that, Pete. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to, um, uh, I've, I've been doing doing my research this way and that way, and I just thought that actually there's there's one um, there's one bit of research which I'm going to show on the screen, and there's some nice little animals. Um, but as I say, there's not going to be many illustrations today because there's a lot I want to go through, lots of words I want to tease this way and that, and sort of uh, break them apart and, and see what they what they mean, um, which I haven't done so far. I, was, I wanted to look at uh, potassium argon dating this week as well. But it's just such a big topic that I want to cover. So um, excuse me if I don't do everything today, but I'm, I can't do every single animal that's become extinct in Britain. It's just such a huge list. But we'll pick out little ones and we'll just basically say, well, we've got that little bit of evidence there. This is what this means and this is what that means. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is if, um, if you try and just let me flow a little bit. But I just want to show a, um, um, a couple of um, images uh, to start off with, so if we just if we just go with this and we sh just share a bit of content, and we go on that, um, and that should be okay. Good, excellent. We're sharing, and sharing is caring, always is. And right, 
So one, um, I don't know if you've ever come across this creature. It's known as a houting. Uh, we're just going to, this is actually um, an extinct, this is worldwide extinct fish. So the point is, is that we, we look at examples of uh, animals that are an extinct in a British context, uh, but in the world, uh, they're, they're, they're still around. But th this, this one fish that used to swim off our coast and we've got bones on archaeological sites and so on, uh, this fish is, is worldwide extinct. Um, it was a white fish and it, I know it's fish, but it is extinct. However, an animal that it'd be a little bit more in keeping with something that we would be aware of is an animal that we mention a, 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 about a great deal. Um, and before <coughs> anyone shouts out, this is an auroch. Um, now, the European aurochs uh, that, that are about today are a lot smaller than the aurochs that we've actually excavated um, mm. in, in, in the archaeology. And obviously an auroch is, is, is an early form of, of ox, an early form of cow, but a very big form. And let's show you how big this animal is. Um, here we go. Look at that there. And if we sort of zoom in on that one, hang on. Hang on, I want this big, hang on, let that go. That's pretty big, isn't it? Mm. That's, a, that's a model of what an auroch looked like. Now, can I just, can I, being somebody that um, has now a great love with six Shetland sheep and my two boys, um, Llewellyn and Griffith, um, uh, sheep themselves are very, very powerful beasts. We, the, the, the Shetland sheep that we've got, and I know you've seen Nikki. That's why I wanted you to show her. She's, she's a little dutty little sheep, right? A tiny little sheep because lots of animals back then, even, um, <laughs> even domesticated cows um, in, in the um, Iron Age, Roman period, um, are quite dutty, right? Um, everything was small except what the cow um, originated from. Um, the auroch is huge. And there's no way would you stand a chance against this auroch. There's absolutely no way at all. And the reason why I mentioned my sheep is that even, even Nikki, uh, if you try and hold her back, um, and, and she's, she's got a mission and she wants to go somewhere, and she, she, she leads the pack. She's seven years old. She, lead, she leads the, um, uh, uh, our little gang of uh, sheep, all six of them, right? She leads the flock. Um, you can't stop her. And there's no way could you stop anything this size. It, 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 it would take um, it would take 20 odd blokes or 20 odd women to try and hold this animal back. It's huge. Um, and that's the point. And when we do find this in the archaeology, the, these, these were like mega beasts. These in the 1100, uh, start again, these 11, um, 12,000 years ago, wandering across Britain uh, were as threatening to life as, as any size of mammoth, um, a big brute. And the ones that are being d domesticated in Europe today, um, hang on a minute, we don't want that. The ones that are domesticated in Europe today, um, are, hang, on if, hang on a minute, oh God, I just lost something a minute. Hang on, nope. I, I just pressed the wrong button. Hang on. No, nope, I've just lost it. The 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 one oh there we go there it is or that brilliant the the one the ones that are being domesticated in Europe today um and, and nowhere near uh, this um uh, this this size that we're actually showing um and there it is sort of ver various sort of illustrations of these aurochs and this this I can remember when we did this years ago Andy remember we we mentioned the um heck cattle. Uh, this is like a European type um, um, example of of an auroch, but obviously it's a lot smaller than what aurochs used to look like because huge, huge, massive beasts, um, and they are they are starting to come back uh, across Europe, um, and just sort of looking at that, a pack of wolves taken on an auroch. Now, I like that, and the reason why I like that is because. Um, auroch and the wolves are now extinct in Britain as well. Um, that auroch itself is quite big. It's 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 um, it's managing against those wolves. 
a, all a wolf, all you need to do against a wolf is damage its leg and it's going to die, right? So, so this pack of wolves probably buggered off. They, they, they probably couldn't tackle this, this orc. Mm. And what I would like to do is go on to this list, right? So let's do this list. So you've got me and you're going to have to look at me prevaricating from my source today. But again, it's an updated source that I used years ago. And I've got to say to Andy that we've got so much that, that is new today. Uh, from what we did ages ago. And I think we probably did this 10 years ago. So let's just sort of, let's um, get off the screen share now and stop screen sharing and let's get on to my stuff. So here we go. Okay, we stopped the screen sharing there. Now, lo lots, of, lots of words that we want to chuck in here today and such as, um, Lots of words such as the Pleistocene, such as the Holocene, such as the Devensian glaciation. Uh, well, we'll just what I want to do. I just want to. I just want to express what these different things mean and just go into little bits of tangents. So we we've got we've got lots of species that we know have become extinct in Britain um, since the ending of um, the last extent of a glaciation. We are, in, in, we are amazing enough in an interglacial. We're actually still, as I said last week, we're, we're still within an ice age period. Yeah, this is an interglacial. This is, this is, this is, this is a, a warm period at this minute, right? Before that, um, so we're in an interglacial now. The period beyond 12,000 years ago was known as a glacial period within... Um, the overall uh, glacial zone that we're in. And the glacial uh, previous to 12,000 years ago was something known as the Pleistocene. Um, the period that we're in at this minute is known as the Holocene, right? This is all an extension of a, of a long glacial period. And within those periods of change, what we do see is that animals come and go. Animals, um, um, animals come into Britain, um, and there's um, a, a very cold glacial period, um, like the Devensian that ended over 12,000 years ago. And um, and those those animals that were that um, lots of animals would, be, would have become extinct in that period. However, when the ice was melting, when Britain was connected to Europe via the Doggerland um, uh, by the Doggerland Land Bridge, as the ice is melting, the animals are coming over, and then. As we know, 8,500 years ago, Britain itself become again disconnected from Europe. So what we can say is there's, there's two points that I want to just put across immediately. The first point is that we've got extinct animals in a British context. Yes, but they're not necessar ne necessarily extinct across the world. For example, the wolf. We don't find wolves in Britain anymore but they're still available in Europe. We don't find the brown bear in Britain anymore, but they're still available in Europe, right? But there are species that are completely extinct, like the Irish great elk. The Irish great elk was a huge beast, probably the same as an auric. Um, and you have the great orc, which is a great, great uh, bird as well. That's become extinct across the world. And the one that we do properly see is a straight tusked elephant, which has become extinct and also the woolly mammoth. So the woolly mammoth is is um, is extinct, and also you could chuck in a saber toothed tiger. The list goes on. Um, and what what we do find is, for a time, and I would argue over anyone who's got another source. Some people would say, you know, that um, we didn't have mammoths, uh, we didn't have mammoths isolated on this uh, um, island, hunted to death. But the the chances that we did. Um, so there were still mammoths wandering around a, a Britain about 8,500 years ago. And we know that because if we look at the, the landscape associated with Doggerland, we see that the Doggerland is littered with mammoth skulls. And those mammoth skulls would have probably been uh, uh, from mammoths who died at the point that the, uh, that the land bridge between Britain and Europe become disconnected. So they're indicating we still had mammoths wandering around uh, Britain 8,500 years ago. So much of what we can say in archaeology is dependent upon change. So what we do find um, 115,000 years ago, 
we have something known as the interglacial, um, uh, the Ipswichian interglacial. Yes, all these different words that we don't use. Um, for a period between 1,300 and 1,000, uh, um, 100 and start again, 130,000 years ago to 115,000 years ago, it's a period of 15,000 years. It was an interglacial period. It was a warm period. There were all those wonderful animals coming over to Britain, including some of our ancestors as well. Um, early forms of Homo sapiens, Homo sapien Neanderthals coming over to Britain because it was a warm place to be. Um, that was the Bel Ritz of Europe where things were warmed up. But 115,000 years ago, um, the ice, um, the ice itself, um, um, the ice sheets started to um, gain gain pressure as well. So, so we go into a really cold period. We go into a very, very cold period known as the Devensian period. And for that period of about 115,000 years ago to around 12,000 years ago, we got a very cold period of glaciation. And then we're into our period today, the interglacial, the warm period to present. And this warm period to present has, has seen has seen huge changes on the different types of flora and fauna in Britain, um, and we've only got a we've only just got an overview of some of those animals because lots of the evidence has has, has come and gone. So for most of, of British history, the British Isles have in fact been connected to Europe. It's only it's only those periods where where you've got those interglacials where everything warms up. Um, that Britain eventually becomes dis disconnected from uh, from Europe. We're not exactly completely sure if in the Ipswichian period, 115,000 years ago, uh, that the land bridge between Europe and Britain was completely flooded. It may have been, but it doesn't matter because any animals that were here would have died anyway because of the cold, um, uh, uh, this cold glacial period that last, which lasts over 100,000 years. Um, and that cold period itself creates a land bridge, um, creates this sort of uh, land bridge completely again. Um, so we've got this land bridge, and we've got all these animals coming over here, right? Um, but they don't stay long because it's a very cold period, this tundra, they can't survive in it. Um, so it's only 12,000 12, years ago where the ice starts to melt, where we still got a land bridge, but eventually the land bridge goes, the animals actually come over here, the flora and fauna starts to come over here. And it's that, it's that fauna itself. That, that gives that sort of adage that as, as the tree line moves further and further up north 12,000 years ago, up until about um, eight and a half thousand years ago, that you've got trees um, are populating the whole of Britain. And those trees themselves are going to be the only trees that get over here for many thousands of years, other than brought by man, uh, due to the fact that we become isolated as an island. So... So what we're talking about is one, one key point is that when we talk about extinction, uh, we're not talking about extinction now. Uh, we're talking about extinction that has occurred in different periods of time through all these different periods of, 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 of cold and warm that have switched in period that ended 115,000 years ago. Um, you, you've got those straight tusk elephants over here, but unfortunately those straight tusk elephants could not survive. They have eventually become worldwide extinct um, and the cold killed them off. But we do have those woolly mammoths um, here and the, those woolly mammoths themselves, the mammoth um, primogenus, prim mammoth primogenus is, is one of those animals that um, is a cold, it likes the cold and was probably one of the only grazing animals that was coming uh, over here um, other than humans, other than hominids. Um, and a few other beasts as well, wolves and so on, a few bears. Um, those were the animals that were able to come over here um, and go back and forth across those sort of icy land bridges um, in the summer months. And remember, one interesting thing, um, um, the, the climate in Britain 20,000 years ago um, at the height of this glacial period was so cold, was so very, very cold that... Um, Winter temperatures were on average um, 40 and uh, minus 40 degrees C. Um, and you were lucky um, to get anything like zero in the summer months, maybe two, three degrees in the summer months, where the top area of the land was, was thawing and, and the mammoths could actually graze in that in the summer months. Um, so 
but 20,000 years ago, much of Britain was under ice and uh, was a great polar desert. Um, but we do have a little bit of life, but not much flora. And um, those big chunky fauna that could actually survive like the woolly mammoth. Um, and as we keep saying, the, the animals repopulated, um, uh, repopulated Britain. Um, causes for the, the loss of animals since Britain become disconnected from Europe because of the flooding of Doggerland. Um, it is the loss of the animals is mainly down to um, changes in habitat, temperature changes, and of, all, of course, those damnable humans. So extinctions in Britain, um, climate change, ecosystem swinging after 8,500 years ago. Those mammoths could not cope with those great changes, probably become extinct naturally or headed back over to Europe before the land bridge was lost. But we do know that they existed here up until very, very late, up until at least uh, the loss of the land bridge um, with Europe. Um, and obviously these changes I've mentioned, woodland clearing, Drainage of marshland, we mentioned that earlier on to do with archaeology, habitat loss. Um, some, you know, we always blame human beings for this, this great habitat loss. Yes, we, we, we're, we're to blame for, for most of it. Um, but then again, we're not responsible for coastal erosion, which is going to be natural, and that's going to take away habitats as well, particularly from something like the Great Orc. Um, and and the, the one thing as well is, Right. The one, the one thing I need to put across, which, which is, which is flashing in my head of a, as a light bulb, which is hugely flashing as a head in my light bulb, um, and what that is 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 something something um, very important. Um, I, I've indicated that you know the mammoths. You know we we've got some isolated mammoths here, um, but Britain back then was much bigger than it was today when it lost that land bridge. Um, and when you think about it, the population of Britain um, in regards to humans was in the thousands. And for those humans to have um, completely made those mammoths extinct, isolated on these islands, um, would have meant that those humans would have had to have gone everywhere. Um, and they would have had to have searched every corner of Britain there are corners of Britain, primeval, primeval woodlands and forests that humans have not even entered into this modern day by human beings in Britain. There's one or two little areas. There's even cave networks in Britain that humans have never been in. So while we could think about that there are other reasons, not just by humans, but there are other reasons what led to the extinction of some of these animals that we've mentioned. For example, the Irish elk. Could it have been because the the great mammoths and the, um, the elks themselves could not survive due to the enemy caused within. The actual trees themselves would, would have caused, um, all, all that tree coverage would have forced those animals to have less and less land to graze, meaning that they would become naturally extinct. And I think that's a very important point. You know, we as humans blame ourselves for, for everything that goes wrong on the planet. And I've got to be very careful what I'm saying here because I've been coming across people saying, oh, there's no such thing as global warming. There's, this just doesn't happen, right? Um, it, we shouldn't be doing recycling. We, we, you know, why can't we use um, petrol-driven calves and all that stuff? I hear that a lot, right? Um, I'm not one of those people. I'm, 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 living, I'm living in an environmentally um, environmental lifestyle. We produce our own um, solar panel. We, we've got solar panels for electricity. Everything generated in front of you today is, is, is um, wind turbine or solar. So that's great. So um, the point I'm trying to make is that there is cause to think that lots of the animals that we have blamed ourselves as humans for becoming extinct would have become extinct anyway, did become extinct because of other factors. And I think that's a very, very important point that I'm making there. So we can't blame ourselves for everything. And I don't think we should continue blaming ourselves for everything. Things become naturally extinct. Caves themselves in Britain, um, and the, the, the caves themselves in Britain have always been seen, again, that links in directly with, with what I said. Let's not blame ourselves. Caves themselves in Britain have become the depository of, of lots of the data that we look at 
to understand extinctions and the losses of habitat and so on and so on. Yes, the losses of habitat in, indicated by caves, the flora and fauna, that's all preserved uh, in, in, in pollen and so on, um, and small bones and whatever within these caves. But unfortunately, lot, 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 a lot of that data has become destroyed um, due to earlier excavation techniques. And this, this is this is the one point. This is the one point um, um, that we can't we can't ex. I, I get lots of people saying, "Oh, why don't why haven't we excavated that? Why not?" Shut up. Uh, why haven't we excavated that bank and ditch enclosure? Why haven't we excavated something like Castle Rig extensively? Because it's it's going to be safe there for many many generations. The, the irony of what uh, Margaret said earlier on is is quite fitting there. Um, but um, you know the problem is. In the past, we've, we've, we've excavated in caves and we lost lots of archaeological stratification and dating. But again, if we do excavate everywhere now, um, then in future years, we're going to have better technology. But there are there are calls, I agree with what Andy said, uh, with the uh, peat bog areas of Britain that we, we really not need to start excavating before all the evidence is gone. And, and then one, one point there as well, I know, know I've just gone a bit distracted. When we look at the Somerset levels, um, lots of the archaeology excavated um, at the turn of the last century is now completely gone, even though it was covered up to protect it, but the peat is all dried up. So um, we, we, we're going to go through part of a list and, and then we're just going to, I'm just going to look at some of these animals. We're going to go through part of a list um, and we'll go from there. But this is definitely not a complete list. And uh, let's just sort of, um, I'm going to try and maybe think about um, when, so we did have straight tusk elephants, right? And they, they, uh, they have never come back. They, they, they disappeared about 115,000 years ago. Now, this is a really, this is a really interesting one. Right? We're going to go off on a little tangents with all of these because this is what we're meant to do. So 115,000 years ago, we, we know that we've got these, um, these straight tusk elephants. They become extinct across the planet. Um, and the one thing about these, the one thing about this, when they were excavating in the muds in London, um, in, in, in about 1913, actually, uh, that date springs in my mind, 1913, uh, when they were excavating in the muds in London, along the River Thames, they actually started to find, um, um, skulls of elephants. And, and first of all, people said, all oh, right, this is evidence of, this is elephants and woolly mammoths, but no, they were different skulls these were very similar to the ones in africa and you know what they did andy they they immediately said that this was this was this was evidence um of those elephants that came over with uh, julius caesar um um in 54 bc or it's evidence of claudius's um elephants that he brought over uh, in 43 AD, the problem is that they were later dated and turned out to be dating to 115,000 years ago. So, you know, we, we, the, the, this is, you know, we started dating stuff and we, we made, got, got those assumptions wrong. And actually one important thing as well is um, in Clement's read books, um, um, oh, it's the name of his uh, submerged, um, oh God, Clement Reed's book from uh, 1913, it was not accepted that we had um, these this submerged landscape and Clement Reed actually said actually the, the, these these skulls of elephants and nothing to do with Julius Caesar and nothing to do with Claudius they actually date from a previous period and all the experts at the time said that Clement Reed was gone um, uh, uh, Cle Clement Reed was wrong but it turned out that Clement Reed was right so the, these straight tusk um, elephants were realised to be evidence yes. of earlier landscapes so the woolly mammoth itself is an animal that's probably come and gone. Um, some people argue that they, they become extinct before the land bridge was lost. I argue that they that the all the archaeological evidence Dogland tells us that the uh, the woolly mammoths um, continued on for a very long period of time. Um, is there is there much in the way of of, of mammoth bone um, in regards to um, early prehistoric archaeology that we've actually excavated? Well, uh, ye yes. But you need to go into the Doggerland for that. Um, and any elephants, any uh, mammoths that were wandering around. And when we think about it, small groups of human beings trying to find evidence of their sites and so on is going to be really, really difficult. So 
um, we're, we're looking at the Doggerland evidence. Um, so on, on this little list in front of me, I'm not going to do all of these. I just can't. One thing that I completely disagree with when you get lists of ex extinct species in regards to Britain, they all they, they chuck a Neanderthal in there. And you're thinking, well, no, 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 no. We, 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 that's another lecture altogether. Um, obviously, genetically, um, um, Neanderthals never become extinct because we, we see traces within, with, within our own systems today. Uh, now, this is a really interesting one. Now, what we do find that um, within a British context, there was the Eurasian beaver. Now, interesting enough, I, I knew you come across people who say, oh, yeah, but beavers are still in Britain today, but they've been reintroduced. So what we, what we do know with the Eurasian beaver itself is that they've become extinct in Britain in 1526. There you go. These big beaver-like creatures become extinct in 1526, and they were never known in Ireland. Now, that's a really interesting one. Why were they never known in Ireland? That's the, the reason. I, it's, it's a problem, that one, uh, because some archaeologists like me believe that um, Ireland was, in fact, connected with Europe at some stage by a very narrow land bridge. By the absence of, of beavers in Ireland basically shows that maybe Ireland was never part of mainland Britain and the land bridge with Europe. Very interesting, Matt. I'm, 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 dis I'm disagreeing. Um, I try to agree and disagree there. And what we've got is those, those little sort of rodent creatures, those lemmings, two types of lemmings, the Arctic and, this, um, and the steppe lemming, we know existed. We've got lemmings existing in Britain in the, in the, in the archaeological evidence up until uh, the loss of the land bridge with Europe, but, but they become extinct. Why they become extinct? Was that because of humans? The answer is no. N-O, definitely not. Little creatures, there's no way. We, we were not to blame for the extinction of the lemon. Uh, let, let's just try and uh, be very clear on that one. Um, now, we, we, what, what, we, what, we, what we then find is that then we, then we've mentioned the vole, for example, now, now voles are very, are very interesting bits of evidence. We've mentioned the voles a few times, actually. We mentioned, I think we mentioned the other week, vole yeah, yeah. as being important evidence for um, human change in Britain and finding vole bones. Um, and um, the very interesting thing is that when we look at the archaeology in Orkney, we, we see a vole in Orkney that, that can, is not found anywhere else in Britain other, other than in the Low Countries. Uh, of Europe, uh, the Netherlands, and we're thinking, uh, hang on a minute, stop, vole, and there's no other, none of this type of vole across the rest of Britain, and then we see these voles appearing on Orkney. Uh, the vole is a very interesting creature in, indeed, a very interesting little rodent, and what we do see is that of needing probably a link with Europe, this narrow-headed vole, for example, became, become extinct 8,000 years ago at the time that the land bridge had already gone, right? So that's very interesting. Um, so so it, it needing to have some kind of link with Europe, the narrow-headed vole, and it, it, the narrow-headed vole's habitat obviously completely changed. So it become extinct naturally 8,000 mm. years ago. <laughs> again, we've, we've mentioned um, there's something known as a root vole. Uh, again, this is, a, this is a rather interesting one, a little, little, little bit of a root vole. Uh, that become extinct 1,000, uh, 3,000, um, start again, 1,500 years ago. So 500 years AD, something known as the root vole become extinct. Now, can we say that that's to do with changes in habitat? And I think it is. That's what we're going to do. Now, when I was a child, we, we used to... To, we used to come across, uh, I, I used to see lots of illustrations of hyenas in Britain. Um, and that's a rather interesting one. Not sort of um, hyenas that lived out on the, the, the step there, but hyenas that lived in Britain in caves. There was something known as the cave hyena. So when, when we, this is interesting, we, what we're doing, we're putting little animals in, into uh, the mix here, because we will come across hyenas 
present in the archaeological data, for example, with sites like Pavilion Cave and other sites on the south coast, um, such as Kent Cavern, for example. And, and what we do see is the cave hyena. The cave hyena is 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 become extinct across the world. It no longer exists. So that's that's one that disappeared um, thirty two thousand years ago when it was relatively cold. Was it the cold that that caused the hyena to die out? Certainly wasn't humans because we weren't in every cave. We were in a few caves, but not every cave. Let's not blame us for for that one. Um, I'm not doing woke history either. Um, I'm not trying to sort of justify things and and so on. What I'm trying to do is be be a pragmatist here. I, I'm not. I don't. One thing I don't like say doing is is we can't really blame humans for everything. Um, there has to be some responsibility on the environment as well. So one animal, one animal which would have inevitably come, become extinct in Britain uh, because of the changes in condition from from cold to warm was the Arctic fox. The Arctic fox disappeared around 10,000 years ago. That's it. It's gone. Right. And that was to do with the changes in temperature. It's, it's ironic, isn't it? The Arctic fox disappears because it gets warmer. Surely it could have adapted, but it just become extinct. So um, and what we're doing with all this evidence, we're using the available evidence. Some of this list and the evidence that we're seeing on this might change. Now, as opposed to as opposed to the brown bear um, or the black bear, we, we see the cave bear itself being another, another casualty of the changes in, in the cold temperatures around 18,000 years ago. So, so what, what we've got with, with that great glacial extent around 20,000 years ago, by 18,000 years ago, the cave bear becomes extinct. It's a rather interesting fact. Okay. Another thing as well is the cave lion. Again, that was another casualty of 32,000 years ago. Cave lions. There you go, lions living in caves. They have become worldwide extinct as well, and so has the cave bear. So, uh, and you could think, you, you, we do have evidence of polar bears in Britain up to 18,000 years ago as well. <laughs> polar bears in Britain, those big white things. Wow. Um, they would have been quite vicious. Now, we, we, we've, um, the brown bear is a rather interesting casualty. Now, we, we, it, it, it's when did the bear become extinct in Britain? I asked an expert the other day and I said, um, are we totally sure that all the bears disappeared from Britain? And they said, yeah, surely they would have seen them by now. But then the same expert argued with me that we, we've actually got um, Eurasian lynxes still in Britain somewhere, right? Wandering around. And I'm thinking, hang on, the Eurasian lynx become extinct. Uh, in around 700 years AD in the height of the Anglo-Saxon period. So where are these lynxes? They, are they still wandering around? So we've lost the brown bear. Brown bears, we did, brown bears, we still, brown bears themselves actually made it to Ireland. So there we go, we swapped we swap their evidence around, haven't we? We, we said that the bee, there's no beavers in Ireland. So does that mean that there was no land bridge between mainland Britain and Ireland? Told you this is gonna be complicated stuff, folks. Um, and then weirdly enough, we've got these brown bears in Ireland. They, they actually become extinct around 500 years BC, a thousand years before uh, they slowly more or less started to get into extinction about 500 years AD, 1,500 years ago. So we've got bears in Ireland. They certainly didn't swim over, or maybe they did. Um, or maybe they went over the giant's causeway, um, but we don't know. So European, European links, rather interesting one there, but we, what we do see, is that the lynx being extinct by about 700 years AD. I hope everybody's writing this down. Uh, Jessica's pen's already run out. Do you want some of my pens, Jessica, that I had for Christmas? Um, the, the next one is a grey wall. Now, let's slow down. Let's just slow down a minute. Now, now what we've got, we've got lots of uh, historical inferences from the wolf, for example, in the reign of Queen Elizabeth. Um, who basically gave a copious amount um, for every pelt that, that was handed over to uh, the treasury and um, anything to do with a, 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 um, a former grey wolf would have done, a skull or anything. That would have been great. Um, and she basically, she, she, 
and probably she offered to give money for anything associated with the grey wolf um, because there probably weren't many around. Um, there probably weren't many around. But interesting enough, we've got some really interesting figures. Now, this is another weird one, that we've still got wolves recorded in Ireland in 1786. So obviously wolves got over to Ireland. Did they swim over there or was it because of a land bridge? So I'm not trying to justify anything. Yeah, I'm just trying to muck around with um, with these different theories. So, so these animals might help us prove one thing or another. So this is really, really good, powerful stuff. Now, the last recorded wolves in Wales seem to be around 1166. Now, um, that's rather, rather interesting 1166 um and if if that's um if that's 1166 then mm -hmm. the story about Llewellyn the Grey Llewellyn ap Yorof, um killing a grey wolf um no I'll start again killing his dog Gellert because he thought great grey wolves had come into the house um trying to attack his son and this would be sometime in about the story would be sometime in about 1220 if that's the case, then wolves didn't become extinct in 1166. They were still alive in um, 1220. If you've got the story about um, Gellert um, and Llewellyn at Europe, Llewellyn the Great, uh, being verifiable or not. So that's a really mm -hmm. interesting point. So I'm putting something else in there. I'm disagreeing with my source, actually. Um, and then what we've got, we've, we've got, we've got wolves themselves really starting to get really scarce by, by around the 1400s. And we've still got them in Scotland in 1680. However, um, what were these wolves doing wandering around in the reign of Queen Elizabeth? That's a rather interesting one there. Okay. So we can we can change and muck around with these dates. As I say, I didn't want to do do all of these. Um, so I'm going to sort of be a little bit more scratch and sniff now. Do you know one thing I used to love when I was a child is looking at images of saber toothed tigers. I used to love it. Um, they've become extinct as well. Those big, great, big tiger things, with, with yellow things, which um, which used to be in those um, weird sort of films from the 1960s. Um, and 10,000 years BC, that's a good one. And um, you've got these massive cats which lived in caves with these huge, huge teeth. Um, and they used to be in the Flintstones as well. There you go. Remember that in the Flintstones, the <laughs> Flintstones film? But they were over here around 26,000 years ago and they become extinct. And it, we haven't got to um, the coldest extents of the Ice Age yet. So they became, they became extinct as well. Um, what we've got in the archaeology as well, we've got evidence of um, on the coasts um, of the north, evidence of walruses, um, at least... Uh, um, at least from about the period of the Vikings, but we, didn't we have that walrus swimming along around our coast really recently? So, mm -hmm. you know, that's nothing to go by. But obviously, occupying bits of the co northern British coastline, um, great big walruses um, in Britain um, lost be becoming a familiar sight um, a thousand years ago. So, this this is this is uh, oh hang on, this is a rather interesting one. Um, and this is about the greater mouse-eared bat. Now, this, this, this I, I, I can see it now. I, I got an image in my head, this, this really nice bat with a huge, massive ears I got in my head. That, um, they become extinct, probably due to human beings. They become extinct in 1990. Um, 1990, um, a solitary male um, was was found um, from one hibernation site in Sussex, and that became extinct in 1990. That's it. One one bat species gone. And again, there is a there is a tragedy in that 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 we in the modern age can allow. This is me going the other way now. Uh, we in the modern age can allow for for a mammal to become extinct like that, um, and that's the thing. So. I, I, I can't, I, I'm, what I'm, I'm being an archaeologist, I'm being a pragmatist, I'm not, I'm not justifying anything, I'm just trying to, I, I'm just trying to go around this now. Um, and here's, here's an interesting species, we've got evidence of, of rhin, the rhinoceros, uh, oh. we've got evidence of the narrow-nosed rhinoceros in the British context, um, 
and they disappear. They disappeared 12,000 years ago. Again, when the ice is melting, they disappear. What's all that about? Really strange thing, that. But we've also got evidence of the woolly rhinoceros. You know, I'm going to chuck in the woolly rhinoceros with the uh, woolly mammoth, for example, um, because we do have... Now, this is the thing, you see. We, we Archaeologists have excavated on, on land sites evidence of the woolly rhinoceros dating to 10,000 years ago. Now, um, and my, my evidence for, for, for the woolly mammoth is actually coming from sea-laden sites up to 8,500 years ago. So there's no reason why we can't find woolly mammoth evidence at least to about 8,000 years ago in the British context with woolly rhinoceros still wandering around you 10,000 years ago. But, but, but they disappear. Um, so here's, here's, a nice little, here's a nice little one. Um, European hippopotamus, that, that um, disappears. That disappears um, um, at the end of the switching period when we got that sort of um, interglacial when it's warm here so that disappears we've got we got evidence here of uh, european hippopotamuses occasionally we get hippopotamus bones being excavated and you hear about that you really do but they date to uh, 115,000 years ago so that that's going to be a warm a, a warm those hippopotamus would have been big as well big big brrr, vicious things uh, irish elk now that's a really interesting one we, we've um mm. one one oh actually do you know what we're going to do <laughs> We're going, we're going to show you. We're going to show you an image of an Irish elk. I, I didn't. I, I, we're going to do this anyway. Let's just break this up a minute. Uh, let's just get um, an Irish elk. It, it's um, oh, it's not screen sharing, is it? Right. Okay. Irish elk. Um, now this is. Uh, I, I'm just going to chuck this in there. Nice little bit of a nice bit of a read here. Um, so let's just um, screen share this one. Let's just, I, I just, I just, the easiest thing on there was to check on the Wikipedia thing, which is good. Um, so that that's good. Um, I wouldn't ever recommend um, uh, completely believing everything on Wikipedia, but on this one, we're going to do it. Um, so the Irish elk, um, the Irish deer, um, there's a mounted skeleton. They're huge beasts, a range from Britain all the way through. Um, and if we, uh, and it basically, it sort of um, goes on to say that um, it had a it had a range from Ireland all the way through to Siberia, and we've got um, evidence of the the um, I Irish elk still existing through carbon dating evidence at least seven thousand um, seven hundred years ago in Western uh, Russia. So if we go, if we type in Irish elk again and see if we can get an idea of scale, um, Irish elk, different from a normal moose, um, but these 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 are these are big things. Uh, there we go. Now, um, we, we th there there we go. Uh, this is there it is. This is an article from um, this is an article from. Um, archaeological um, evidence that's been excavated in the island itself now that elk is big um you're not gonna muck around with that elk and can i just can i just add this sort of can i add this into it that lots of these beasts that we're accusing ourselves of leading into extinction um were, were quite vicious creatures um and these these elks would wouldn't have wanted themselves to be carved up by a human being by by any stroke of the imagination, and I tell you what we weren't as equipped as for example a pack of wolves, and I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna argue the point that um, we've got to be very very careful when we're looking at the archaeology here. We do find um, evidence of um, some of these elk bones being used um, seen in an earlier context um, in regards to um, human human beings um and when we when we see that we we for example when, when we look at jersey we, we found one site that there's thousands and thousands of bones associated with mammoths um that have almost sort of gone over the side of a cliff and at the bottom of, of the cliff they've excavated and they they found all these bones they, they found all this evidence of butchered bones in regards to um these mammoths that managed to get over to jersey right but that was that was only one herd. There were there were herd upon herds and herds, and lots of them would be completely undetected by human beings. And it's the same with these elks as well. And I'm sure that um, 
lots of human beings came a cropper coming across these beasts. Oh God, how the hell have I got to 844? Right, okay. Um oh. right, okay. I'm in a bit of a flow, right? Just let, let me keep with my flow, folks, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have a break when I want a break. Uh, I'm the one in charge. Roger, I like being in charge. I like wearing the trousers in this one. Um so here we go. We stop the screen sharing there, and we're going to do that. Back to my little list. I want to finish this list actually. So you, you've also you've also got in the British context. Now this is rather interesting. We've mentioned the Irish elk. There's also the Eurasian elk. Like that's a really interesting one. We actually had the big sort of Eurasian elk, like the present day ones in Scandinavia. Um, they're not as big as the one we just seen, but we've got evidence in Britain of them still around in the 1300s. That's really interesting. Um, and it was probably that the red deer uh, and deer parks probably led to the extinction of, of, of for example, our, our Eurasian elk. Um, and, it, and it was that sort of inability to sort of um, act and alter to change. Um, and that's that's a really really important point. Um, so what what else have we got here? We've got um, uh, we've we've got um, the the reindeer itself um, as a very distinctive reindeer species in Britain. Um, that there's lots of reindeers around today because they've been reintroduced, folks, right? But the reindeer itself as as a, as a British species, um, as as a species like. The European elk become extinct in Britain 900 years ago um, in the 1100s. Um, so the reindeer become extinct. Now, it's a rather interesting one, that one, indeed. Very, very interesting one that, that, that we think about that one. Um, I'm going to, yes. Now, what we've got left in this little list, we've got the Eurasian auric, uh, we've got the steppe bison, and then we've got the wild boar. Now, now, the wild boar's the one at the end, and we've got to do that one. Um, and then we will have a break. So um, what we've got, interestingly enough, um, the auric itself uh, is still around in Britain. Um, big, huge aurochs in Britain. And now this, this is a bit of a weird one. They are still around in Britain a thousand years ago. So in Britain... We had a, we had an extinction event involving um, the reindeer and the European elk um, and the Eurasian auroch um, sometime around the the 10, 11, 1200s that, that type of time, right? Uh, because they just didn't suit. They they didn't they didn't suit with with our with our deer and our deer parks, and they just didn't go. Uh, and they they just they just they just didn't go. And and our landscape was very much. Um, very much, con very much more controlled. I've got to, I've got to make a make another point as well. When when we think about the the dewoodestation and the deforestation of Britain, for the Eurasian auroch, for example, and when we when we chuck in the mix the reindeer and the side um, re reindeer uh, and the European elk, our, our clearance of trees would have been perfect for them. But we were clearing trees and then we were putting boundaries in the way. We were dividing the landscape so those animals could not move around. And they would have had complete conflict with human beings, a bit like elephants do in, in South Africa and, and Kenya today. And then we're trying to deal with that. So there isn't conflict. So ooh, ooh, I, I, need, I, need, I need to chill out, man. Um, we did have bisons in this country. We've got bones, but we don't know when they become extinct. So the, out of everything there, we've got bones. That's probably from the Doggerland, right? So there are a context. So we've got bisons, but when they become extinct, we don't know. Right, so we're, we're, that's one. And then and finally, we're, finally with this list, I've missed a couple out, not too many, right? Um, now, interestingly enough, the wild boar. Now, this is, this, is an, this is an arguing point, this one. We've got the, the pure um, wild boar in Britain up until about the 1400s. But the biggest problem with the wild boar is that they're going to be very destructive of woodland. 
oh, it's my woodland. I, I am the lord of the woods and I need to have my my pheasants and everything flying around the woods. I don't even know when pheasants were, were introduced, whatever, but that's something else. Um, and, you know, problem is to a landowner who owns a woodland, they're going to be a bit peed off that the boars are in there. So they're going to want to see the boars being exterminated. Um, and it, it's it's one of those things. And at an earlier point, I just made earlier on, so we could see the wild bear boar as sort of a, a species being wiped out by around the 1400s or just a little bit later. Wild boars need the woodland, so they would have directly competed with human beings for the woodland um, and the other species that we need to use the woodland for. And but I just mentioned one point earlier on that I didn't actually mention was was in regards to um, uh, those wolves. The wolves would have found it absolutely perfect us to have areas cleared in Britain. Um, I'm, I'm just thinking about packs of wolves what, what running around the Grampians and, and, and the Snowdonian landscape. But then again, they're not really suited for that. They're probably more suited for lowland areas that they're going to come in direct contact with human beings and boundaries. So the grey wolf has gone. Um, did any survive? That's the question. Little little wolves wandering around here and there. Difficult to say. Right. OK. Uh, so what I think we're going to do, do you know what? I, I am not exactly sure whether we're going to get through everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a snapshot list then. And I've got a nice little list from the National Trust, sort of, um, which I'm going to show you some images. Um, and it's a nice one of those nice little things you can look at on the Internet. So um, what I would like to do is I would like to see if there are any questions. And I'm just um, or new study questions when the brown bear becomes extinct in Britain. That's an article. That's what that's what we'll do first off the break if we can do it. So. Right, let's let's see if there's any questions. Right, who are we going to start off with first? Ladies first. Roger, what would you like to say? That's the thing I've got to establish is where these different ages come in time. For instance, you've got the Bronze Age, 2,500 BC, fine. But what just precedes that and where does the Neolithic fit into this? Because it's before these periods, quite a long time ago. But I'd like to have that established, whether we can get any sort of so right, okay. Showing that. <clears throat> okay. No, I, I, like I think I, I, I think the best thing to do, the best thing to do next week, right? Um, we have mentioned this, but I what I think to do, I think um we have now come to the crunch point that we that we need to show this list on the screen. So Roger, next week I'm gonna prepare a list. Right. right? We're gonna yep. go through Carl, we're gonna go through Daddy Carl's list. Next it's week. quite involved, as you say, fine, and this is where it all builds, but getting a picture of what fits in what, and the integration yes. type of thing, the animals and the humans, the various forms of the humans, hom hominid, and okay. back to whatever we can go. Timeline. Mm. Uh, okay, that's what we'll do next week. Um, um, and in, in fact, here we go. We've got stadial, stadials and interstadials. That, we'll put them in next week as well. Andy remembers them, don't you, Andy? Yep. I right, uh, Andy, talking about women, you next. Um, I was curious as to whether the hunting practices changed and therefore land use, and that got rid of some of the animals like the wild boar and things, because they around the same sort of period is when the gun started to be introduced, didn't it? As well. So I, 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 I think I think if I if I look a bit more of a pragmatist on this. Um, if, if, I, if I look and think, well, actually, it's a change of use of the wood mm, um, yeah. and, and, and the competition, um, not necessarily what's being introduced in the range of weapons. And you are dead right about gunpowder. And mm. the thing is, and the thing is um, when you're talking about the 15, 1600s and people are actually starting to think, oh, well, you know, bow and arrow is not going to be much good to, down a bird but the gun is gonna be yeah. um and you you've got these 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 pigs wandering around the woodland um damaging the habitat of birds you're not going to want them in there hence no. hence pheasants and and, and yeah. other game birds so that's well, a really important point andy yes because yeah, I, I was thinking that's that's with kind of the royal estates that's when they started to change wasn't it so mm -hmm. and bingo like yeah. like like your good old savanax you know your savanax yeah. forest right <laughs> where yeah. where to be honest with you right Savanac Forest is, is um, for example, the, the woodland that we've got. Now, this is a this is a point. The woodland that we've got is um, 
there, there's there's lots of branches and stuff around the woodland, right? So we've got to collect it up and we've got to sort of put it around the side of the wood, right? Uh, now, we're maintaining our woodland. But then again, when you think about Savanac Forest, you've got to maintain the woodland as well. Mm. Um, and th th there's, there's, two, there's two issues here. That, that, oh, this is a really complicated one, Andy, but I've got to do it. I'm on it. Um, th there, was a, there was a chap a few years ago. He wrote, there was a, he did a radio thing. It, he said about lots of people go out there and they think they're doing good for the planet and they buy a woodland, right? And they just leave it. And what happens is that all the brambles grow up and, and no new seedlings come through. And that's it. Right. What they don't understand, you've got to maintain that woodland. Right. Um, and those pigs wandering around, those boars, let's call them wild boars wandering around, did a lot of good for those woodlands. Yeah. Right. But that that was at odds with the management of the woodland yeah. management of the woodland. It needs to be managed in a different way. So you've got um, coppicing. Right. Um, to allow the young shoots to come through coppicing, you you don't want wild boars in there no. because that 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 coppice, coppice wood itself is is vital for 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 your everyday buildings, right? Um, and you don't want pigs wandering around. So so the point is, if you want to go all the way back, you mm. if you want to manage your woodland, right? You you go to the local farm and you say, right. Um, I've got four acres of woodland. I've got one acre. I've got four acres of woodland. Um, can we loan some of your animals to graze? And now, now I've got six sheep. We just chuck the sheep in there and they graze on everything. And we, we pull them out and we've got wild flowers coming through, right? We're never going to have wild flowers if we don't allow those sheep to graze. And we're never going to have wild flowers unless we collect all that wood up and put around the side. So all of these factors are really, really important. We're not, we're not deliberately going out to kill the wild boar, what we are doing, we need to manage the woodlands and the wild boars get in the way. Yep, yep. If they found that also in Yellowstone Park when they reintroduced the wolves there, it moved all the larger animals that were grazing openly, like the, what have they got, red deer and something else there, and the bison, which is yeah. what we would have had here. Well, I do still yes. have red deer. They, instead of grazing openly, they then moved up into the tree line to hide away from the wolves. So yes. it changed their habitat, which will then have changed the habitat of the woodland because of the grazing practices. And they said it's really altered it quite dramatically and, and for the better. So they, they thought. Yeah, so. I, I've heard about that because they, they, you've got the problem with the um, uh, the lynxes and the wolverines and yeah. all the rest of it. And, and, yeah. and the whole system has changed. Yeah, I've yeah. heard that. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember watching that. Somebody said there's a bad idea. And they said, just watch what happens. Yeah, and yeah. Out, really good interesting. Idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. it is. Oh God! Um, uh, when I thought about doing this today, I thought it would be a good one, and it has. So good. Right? Who, who else would like to say something? Um, who else have we got there? Um, uh, Claire, anything you want to say? Because Claire's going to say, "I've got to go in a minute." <laughs> All right then. She, uh, right. What about you, Anne? Go on. Give it. Give it to us, Anne. Well, there's one. There's one thing that puzzles me a bit because I don't know much about it. One of the things you mentioned was the wolves tackling a big animal um, and that uh, they were more dangerous than men. But at the, uh, perhaps it depends on the size of the pack of man or wolves. Also, at the point when men got weapons, when they could start throwing um, spears rather than just throwing stones or something, would that have made a difference to which one was the more dangerous? Uh, I, actually, um, do, 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 you know, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm not going to fudge this one. Uh, what, 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 what we see is the type of weapons, because because Andy just put in a gun there, right? Yeah. So that's going to make a huge difference. Um, yeah. But uh, before that, they would have been able to throw spears. Yeah, that, that's that's right. Um, but uh, Claire, Claire, by the way, is, is, is say, see you, Claire. Bye. Hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. Hi, Claire. So right, uh, let, let's try and let's try and focus on this point. Uh, let's try and focus on this point. Um, if you've got, if say for example, you've got a an auric that's moved into a wood and is able to yeah. maneuver around a wood, and you've got spears and stuff, right? That's not going to work, no. right? Um, if you're a pack of wolves, it is going to work, right? Yeah. Um, the the point is, this is what we see. I'm going to bring a bit of archaeology in this. When 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 we looked at when we looked at Barris. Um, and his, uh, his army that marched into Teutonburg Forest um, into the, the, the latter year of 9 AD. Um, 
Varus's soldiers were completely inept. Right, they were yeah. unable to fight um, with with their with their pilums. They were unable to their 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 spears. If they if they threw them, they they, they just couldn't get yeah. that direction. Yeah. Right? yeah, it really depends where you're looking at. So if yeah. you're looking, the problem is if you've got this huge elk out in the middle of the countryside, right, and you try and a group of humans try and surround it, that elk's just got to go over there and it's got away, right? Um, if the elk ends up um, driving itself into a woodland but is still able to manoeuvre, then the humans have got a disadvantage with the weapons they're actually using. But yeah. the advantage is that the, fuck, the, the wolves that then have an advantage against yeah. the orchid woodland, right? Yeah. Um, but if, if you say, for example, the, the, the good advantage humans have, if you, um, if, if you corner an oric in a valley, right, um, and, and it's channeled, and the oric's only got one place to go that way or that way, then we've got an advantage, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if if um, if if the wolves then face the auroch in the valley, then the auroch probably got an advantage because it can just deal with the. But it's not going to be yeah. able to deal with humans. So it really depends which environment and landscape. This yeah. is why when we when we look at the archaeological evidence, when we look at Jersey, for example, we look at the um, mammoths going over the edge. What they've done. They've cornered those mammoths and they've sent them up the hill and they've gone over the edge. But they couldn't have sent the mammoths over a hill if it was a, just a, if it was an endless step. The mammoths would just go over there and you'd never see them again. It's the same with my sheep, right? Um, um, my, um, I, 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 I panicked. I panicked yesterday when uh, my, my sheep just darted down the road. I had my little Nicky alongside me mm -hmm. saying, look, it's OK. The other five had just gone up the road. I'm OK. Uh, I know I'm okay, and you're going to look after me, and you're going to give me biscuits. <laughs> but the other lot just ran up the road, right? I had no control, and and eventually was able to bring them back. It depends on how animals mm. react, and animals are far more intelligent than we give them credit for. Right. Thank, uh, you. Hope yeah, thank, you, for that. thank you for that, Margaret. Well, the, um, all our domesticated cows are supposed to be descendants of the aurochs, aren't they? And yes. they look very, you can see a similarity with Spanish bullfighting bulls. They look like a smaller version of Oh, them. God, they're vicious, aren't they? But, yeah. yeah, but you can see the similarity. I just wonder yeah. at what point um, they developed into what we recognise today. Um. Can I just make one point? We do know that aurochs, were, uh, aurochs in the European context can um, a, a vicious, dangerous little, um, mm. and um, and that's one thing that we don't give them credit for. We're just thinking about a big, big cow with big horns, and we're um, and we're just having it dancing around. Well, they can be a lot more vicious than that. And this is when you use the bull bullfighting ability. We're, we're starting to see probably an evolution. Um, into these these the cows that we see to, today, as soon as human beings start to develop within Europe, so we've we've got these new breeds and everything developing. When you look start looking at the origins of animal husbandry, at least eight thousand years ago in the European mm. continent. So slowly, what what they're starting to realise is is quite is quite easy, right? For example, my my sheep, my sheep. Um, we've got we've um, we've got some sheep that have got white wool. Um, Nikki's Nikki's um, a show sheep. Mm. Um, and she's got a mixture of wool, but they don't want a mixture of wool. They want white wool, right? Mm. So what we'd need to do is with Nikki is breed from her, which we're not going to do, and and um, have have a, a sheep that's got white wool. And people knew that in the past. I mean, they're not not bloody stupid. They they knew they knew about breeding. Mm. They they knew, for example, if you. Um, they, they, they knew, for example, that, that a man and a woman, if one's got brown eyes and, and, and the other's got black hair and the other's got red hair, what you can do, you can get a child with these elements and you can get what you want. Why can't you do that with animals? And they did do that with animals. Um, and this idea of animal husbandry and all the rest of it came a lot, lot earlier than we give it credit for all over. Mm. Didn't um, Hitler try to reintroduce or try to read? Yes, he did. The giant, yeah. the, the ancient oryx, yeah. Yes, that that Andy, you've just reminded me. It was a heck. It was the heck breed. Yes, the heck. Um, yeah. It it was um, it, it, the, the heck, heck breed. Yeah. yeah, was being re reintroduced. Heck yeah. was being reintroduced. Um, it was um, a, a Nazi eugenics uh, program, and it was mm. um, yeah, they they were 
um, it, it was um, it, it was one of those things that they they were experimented with quite extensively. It did actually work, but there was two brothers, mm. one there, Andy, and mm. one fell out with the other one. And yeah, we don't want to go there. Yeah, exactly. Um, probably called Aldi. Aldi and, 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 and Lidl. Lidl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hang on, what's the other one called Lidl? They all think so. Drina, anything you'd like to say? Because we, we need to break. No, got... no, no, thank you. What about you, Pete? Well, uh, the uh, the Oryx, they were uh, rude and room rudiments weren't they Rum and ruminants, they were, yep. ruminants yeah they were they were eating grass mm -hmm. and vegetables and they would not necessarily be fierce unless they're threatened yeah yeah and the, the removal of the wolves maybe the people removed the predatory animals to protect their domestic ones ah. and actually yeah. Peter's made the point peter's made another point mm -hmm. actually the point the point is is that i, I you Peter's just spotted something which which I naively didn't do. Uh, the point is, is if you and Andy's done it himself, and Andy did it, and I've only just realised what Andy said. Uh, if you if you remove a certain creature from from the system, right, it might lead to another animal's extinction anyway, or it might lead to the animal becoming naturally domesticated. And I think that's what Pete's point is, and um, that they don't need to be as vicious. Um, and that's a really, really powerful point. That is, Peter, that um, uh, in, indirectly, uh, in, indirectly, what what we're doing is we're um, if we take something out of the ecosystem, then it has a massive effect on everything else. And the other thing, as well, is um, and the point is is that um, when you take certain carnivores out of a system, right, which prey on other carnivores. Those carnivals that are used to only eating one animal, right, gorges on all those animals because there's nothing dealing with that carnival. And this is why this is why the fox has become the predominant species um, out there. Um, it can go out and wipe out a whole a whole um, a whole section of lambs. Um, it can wipe out um, a whole flock of um, chickens. Everything one fox. But if a fox is worried about something, it's not going to do that. Because I tell you what, um, a bear's not going to be worried about a load of um, chickens. It wants to get to the fox because there's a nice chunk of meat on that fox. Uh, so if a so fox that's... gets amongst the chickens, he doesn't just kill one. He kills the lot. He'll kill the lot, yes. Yeah. And that's the point. But if the fox is worried about um, another predator, it, it, it's, it's going to be worried. It's going to be looking around, you know, because that, that's going to draw somebody else in. And that something else is going to go up for the fox. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. This is a complete biodiverse change, and every. Do you know what I should have said earlier on? Instead of um, me trying to make it too simple, uh, I, I think uh, cause and effect on the ecosystem is is, is quite massive. Um, you take one thing out, and everything changes. Mm -hmm. And that could be that could be anything, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and then again, you take something out and something becomes massive. You think about the lemmings, for example, like you talk about lemming populations. They have their own way of dealing with their populations. And if a lemming population had no predators and all the rest of it, I am told that a lemming will try and um, destroy its own population because there's too many of them because there's not enough food for it to eat anymore. Well, look at how the what the Europeans absolutely massacred the buffalo in America, and that would have affected the deciduous population, wouldn't it? Yeah, though so you really spoiled it now because that's a, that that's one of the most heinous things we ever did. Mm. Um, you know, we're, we're we're talking about piles of millions of these things by rotting out on there to just try, and that 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 was to try and deal with the food source of um, Native Americans. Mm. And I, I, t I tell you what, if I was a Native American now, I'd be very angry that it's all about um, America is all about two two types of people, isn't it? The, the oh, black and white absolutely. people. And it's just like if I was a Native American, I'd be so angry and I'd be thinking, actually, this is my country. It's neither of your country. Mm. It's not you Europeans or you Africans. Right. It's my country. Well, no, nobody's talking about me. And you've just mentioned that the the. the um, um, the thing about the buffaloes there is just like um, they were completely deliberately wiped out to deal with uh, to deal with another type of human being. We're not talking about we're talking about the extinction of a type of human being, the same extinction that was happening in the Second World War uh, with all those ethnic groups in Europe. Mm. 
but the motive was money, wasn't it? Selling the hides mm. was the main yeah, well, motive, I think. Well, I, to be honest with you, was it? They, they left them rotting? Upon, no, I don't know. Oh, it, mm. Sorry I mentioned it. <laughs> I, I wish you hadn't mentioned it. Now you've ruined my day. Yeah, sorry Jessica, about that. <laughs> talking about ruining my day, Jessica, anything you'd like to say? Oh, that Jessica's gone. Do you know what? I think Jessica's um, Je Jessica's um, gone off because I, I, I think I upset her earlier on. Oh. Is she still there? Hang on a minute. Are you upset her, Roger, by insisting that she do an itinerary? She's there writing the itinerary for you, Roger, you selfish man, you. I just thought I'd ask, you know, a little bit. Yeah, don't, don't, Roger, Roger, if you don't bother, idea. okay? <laughs> Roger, don't bother, all right? Yeah, yeah. Right, anyway, we're going to take a break and we'll be back. A quick break, folks. Right, back. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five yeah. minutes. Just enough time to, for you to be annoying to somebody else, Roger. Well, I'll work on that. I see that they brought back doors into the Dean Forest. Well, and my friends have moved to the Dean Forest for their little buggers are after the the crops and stuff they got, the plants, taking down fences. So. Yeah, yeah, well, it's not, but they were there before. Anyway, Roger, yes. we'll be back. Go ahead. No, matron, shut your yeah. face. Do they mean me? Shut me not. No, no. Oh. Uh, I, I think that gives Roger a bit of a tickle, I do. <laughs> no. I'm uh, dreaming of a white Christmas doo doo doo. I wonder, I, I wonder when you know Christmas is a wonderful time of year. I'm looking forward to it. I am. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Roger, you know I'm going to go into a bit of gay abandon and run naked into the sea. They do it. They're good for you. Oh, I, I, it's, it's better better to sleep if you sleep naked. You know that? Yeah, yeah, I, I, that's true. Yes, I, I always sleep naked, Roger. You should know. With your woman, you're well. That's fine. Oh, exactly, Rog, Can I just ask you a question, right? Yeah. Why is the Ukraine sending troops in to defend um, a radioactive um, um, a, a radioactive Chernobyl? Why are they defending Chernobyl? It's a radioactive zone. Why would you do that? No idea. I know what Putin's up to. He's worried about losing control of the area, like he's moved troops into Syria and got the Crimea for a war border port. Now he wants to make sure that all the countries alongside the border are neutral. Not NATO. That's all he's after. Yeah, so, no, I, I Roger. Say yes, stop, yes, stay neutral. It might help. Do not stir it up. To be no. honest with you, Roger, that's the most sensible thing you've ever said, and I actually completely agree with you, Rog. Rog, man, we, we're talking. We, 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 we're talking on the same end sheet. Danger. What he might do is to kill off the president who's getting stooged. That's the danger. That's his method. Like he's been killing people. I go to Salisbury with Jill, and in the park there, that's those people have been in there with their lethal dose they were checked, to kill people off. So they didn't want ex, you know, for spy purposes and stuff. He won't stop at anything, but that's what he's after, and that's why he went to the Crimea and he's in Syria to have warm water ports. Yeah, so I, 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 have I, all I, the run of it all. But we're relying I, on them on gas and stuff. Perhaps you really. Yeah, we can't upset them too much, can we? No, oh, it's crazy. It's more craziness than it's human. Twisting human. human beings. Roger, I've got to put the kettle on. I'll be back. I've got to have my bit of batter breath as well. Batter well, breath, yeah. Nice. You can always stop and me enjoy my batter breath, Roger. What's wrong with you? It's like a... It's a good, nasty... Please believe me, and I know. Hey. 
early and we can't use you. Please, I love you, I you know. You know, there's nothing wrong with a bit of art, guy from Blizzard. I'm enjoying my new library. Yes, a new yeah. library. Where's that? I, my library in my garage. Oh, oh, yeah. Are you managed to read it a lot of it? Um, yeah, I'm reading at the moment the place names of Cumbria. All oh, right. Which is very interesting. Yeah. They think Arnside was named after a person called Arnie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we don't know anything. But we don't know who Arnie is. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, is there a copy of the Kama Sutra in there? That could well be, actually, yeah. No, Andy all, kind of, all kinds of things there. All right. Uh, you know what? I, I, I bought the, I bought a camera suit years ago, but it had no illustrations in it. I was really disappointed. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I didn't see the point. Well, you wouldn't, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need the illustrations. I bought What's the point you're thinking about it? How, how do you know you're going to get these things right when you do it anyway? You need illustrations to show you what to do. Yeah, that's right. You use your imagination. No, no, I bought, I bought the Karma Sutra with all the pictures in. And I gave it to. A, I bought it for a friend. Oh, <laughs> really? Did you have a look first? <laughs> yes, it was. It was. It was very interesting book to look at. Can somebody tell me, have we actually done the European links in that list? Did we? We didn't do the links, did we? Mentioned it, didn't we? I think you mentioned it. You did. Yeah, but I, did, I didn't really do much about it, did I? Any, no, anyway, no. we've got the links next, anyway. I got, I got a little article. Um, well, it's not a little article. It's from the Woodland Trust, actually. Uh, I'm just going to show you some images, and I'm just going to go over it quickly. Um, so that, that'll be good. I, but I wanted to do that other other thing as well as I'm just going to pour my tea and we'll get on with it. Um, mm. I, I got I to gotta get down to the sheet, you see, and make sure that they're okay. What, what are they? I've cover some Yeah, one. yeah I, I, look, I worry about my sheep because, you know, I, I've got to make sure that, uh, i, I got to make sure that my, um, my Nicky's okay, you know? Yeah, well done. Where are they? Undercover somewhere? Or? Yeah, 
Well, I've got three little buildings that I've built, right? And they and they 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 live underneath them. Oh. oh. Well, no, well. One of them's a wood store. No, no one. No, one of them's the um the food store, and the one next door, the goats used to live in, and um the one above it, um that's the that's the straw store, and they don't go in there either. And the thing is, right, the goats ain't very happy because they used to live down there. So we kicked the goats out from their house, the goat house. Oh. That we did. So we're going to move the goats back down there, and <laughs> uh, and that's what's going to happen. I'm going to finish my bar. Hang on, I, you've got it. You gotta see me watch my bar eat my barra breath. Hang on, we've got to because these people in Cumbria they don't have a clue what barra breath is, Rod. So, you know, uh, we'll a, a, a nice bit of a moist barra breath, Rod. On, yeah, there we go. Okay, lovely, beautiful. Do you know, do you know what? Means, it means dotted breath. So yeah, because of the can I just can I just say one thing, Rod? Right? What? You know, we got Welsh pigs. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're more special than the English because they don't have English cakes. We've got Welsh no. cakes that don't have them. No. And, and, and as for Cornwall, right? They don't even have cakes in Cornwall. So no. we're no, better no. than the Cornish people. They've got every cake. Have go back to down there. they every cake. Oh, oh. What cake? Every cake. Heavy cake, but yeah, well, it, well, it's not light, is it? <laughs> But it's there to when, they, uh, when the pilchards are running so they can heave the net. Evo cake. What? <laughs> what the hell is he on about? Evo cake. <laughs> Evo stick it up. Right. Right, okay, let's 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 crack on. So I think Roger's suggestion. So next week I'm gonna do list of dates and whatever. Um, I'll have them in order on the screen and we'll do the Swiss Lake Villages. Um, and th so we're going to crack on. Oh, do you know what, right? Do you know what? what? Uh, why don't I send Drina a recipe for Barra Breath, right? See? Mmm. Um, Cook tidy, yeah. But she'd have to use Welsh ingredients, so I don't know where she's going to get them from. We'll have to send a pack of... What about Cumbrian he likes? Anything up there? No, uh, I tell you what, no, they're all in Lancashire, like Chorley cakes and apple cakes. What's that stuff they use for monthly knitting? That They've got grassmere gingerbread, which is Lovely. pretty, pretty good. Could you oh. cook that, Margaret? Grassmere it... gingerbread, it's delicious. Lovely. Is it something called rum nicky? Yes, it's a tart. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. An old tart. Nicky. What, what, <laughs> I, well, don't you call my Nicky a tart? That's terrible. <laughs> oh, it sounds lovely. I like ginger. Great. I like ginger as well. Look at Margaret. <laughs> I only like cakes with cream. I, I think Barabrith, is it called? Isn't it a bit dry? No. Oh, no, no, no. Is it very it's, moist? Yeah, it's a fruit cake. Fruit cake. You would call uh, it a cake. current loaf. That's it's right. Well, That's why as long as it's, I just don't like things that are very dry. And, no, it's, and it's made with tea. You've got to put tea in it. It's great. Yeah. Oh, it's oh, the tea really. bread. Like you know, bread. You've got to, lots of butter on. It's we've we've got a version of that up here. <laughs> no, yeah. And we've got Montlo. And we've anyway, got everything Montlo. here, really. Yeah. Oh. Right. Okay, folks. Actually, let, what we're going to do, I'm going to spend, I'm going to try and spend about five minutes on this, this other list, right? And from yeah. Jessica, here we go. Jessica, Jessica's saying, uh, uh, we, we got Je Jessica's been a bit left out today, isn't she? Right. Is she? Hi, Carl. I have internet issues, so I might be lost. What? Oh, we'll rescue you. Now. I don't know how she's you. found. But but if I but if I but if I gone, what what university did you go to? I will call. <laughs> yeah. If I gone, like, isn't it? my God. <laughs> My God, she, she should write the next newsletter because that that, uh, that would be that would be yeah. Oh, it's okay then, Jess. Sorry. I'm, uh, yeah, I like winding her up when she can't say anything. It's good. It feels it's like getting me. you back. Oh, oh, yeah. hang on. Is she saying something out? Jess, I'm going to carry on. She says, "I am on the phone. I am having no luck typing. Oh. Tech oh. is not on my side." Jess, that's okay. I've got to get on. Cheers, Jess. Mm. You tell us the rest later. Oh God. She she wanted to have the last word. It was. 
Right, okay, let's get on to this. Right, so my little list. So I was going to, a few things I wanted to do. So, you know, we've, we've, we've mentioned extensively about the mammalia and, you know, th there's, there's, a, there's a long list. We mentioned the great orc that actually became extinct in 1844, which is, which is quite an interesting one. Um, and there, there is a, there is a, there is a list here, quite a long list of, um, of, of, of storks. We, we used to have a white stork that was, was still around in 1416 that became extinct. Um, something known as the white tailed eagle. We'll mention that in this, in this next list that, that, uh, became extinct in 1916. Uh, oh, the capercalia. Now that's an interesting one. The capercalia that I used to hear about that a lot. Um, when I used to watch the the um, th those wonderful um, oh god uh, nature programs from the eighties, or oh, the red kite as well that that was become extinct in Britain in the eighteen seventies and hung yeah, on in yeah. Wales, and now the kite is out. That now the red kite is every everywhere. Osprey, not yeah. the rugby team, that disappeared in nineteen sixteen, but it's back. Um, and there's lots of other things like the little eaglet, e egret that become extinct in the late medieval period. Um, and also the common crane, for example, um, that was a reintroduction that disappeared in the late medieval period. And interesting, enough, listen to this, a Dalmatian pelican uh, that disappeared about 3000 years ago. Um, rather interesting there. Um, Eurasian mm. eagle owl. Um, that, that, now, that's an interesting one. Can I just mention this? Right? The Eurasian eagle owl uh, disappeared from Britain around 8000 years ago. But they re they they re um they, it's become reestablished here. Interesting enough, it doesn't say reintroduced. It's become reestablished. The Eurasian, the Eurasian eagle owl was reestablished in Britain after what is it eight thousand years? That's amazing. I think that's great. Oh, the great so, buzzard. So, so is the little egret. That's become reestablished as well. Oh yeah. Yes, that's them, yeah. yeah. The little egret. You you are right. That's on my list. Yeah. That's become reestablished. Uh, re um. Most and, birds and animals will reproduce according to the availability of food. And we've yes. noticed this out on Platom Island, where we, where we would have as many as 4,000 nesting pairs of lesser blackback gulls. But then they closed Lambeth, Lambeth Way, which was the, uh, uh, the, the council tip. That was closed from all domestic waste. And consequently, that was their major source of food. And, and consequently, we're now down to 2,000 nesting pairs. Gosh. Oh. Now, I just wanted to mention a couple of other things. We mentioned a few birds, not all of them. Um, now, I'm, I'm very, I'm very much into my, um, I'm very much into my amphibians. And in Britain, we 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 don't have many varieties of of toad and frog. For example, toad. For example, we have the natterjack and the common uh, toad. Uh, in regards to frogs, we have the common frog. Um, I think we've got the marsh frog and another example <coughs> of frog as well. Um, but there were a lot more. There was actually um, there, there was actually uh, a moor frog, a pool frog and an agile frog. And all of these once existed in Britain. But strangely enough, become extinct in the medieval period. The moor frog, frog disappeared uh, about a thousand, a thousand years ago. So did the agile frog. Others say they survived on longer. But these amphibians are becoming extinct for reasons that we don't know about. Um, okay, an another little one. Um, th this is rather interesting, and, and th this is this is a debatable one. I remember we had a class on this years ago. Uh, reptiles, right? Um, right, reptiles. Th th very awkward one here. Um, we've got a snake known as the Esculapian snake um, that is believed to have existed in Britain um, um, and become extinct um, 3,000 years ago. Now, the European pond turtle. Now, that's an interesting one. That is a very interesting one. That's, the, that's one of two, basically. The European pond turtle, um, we do know, for example, that... Um, monks in Britain did actually keep um, turtles in Britain um, probably around 800 years ago. We know that there, there were pond turtles in Britain uh, being kept by monks. Now, now did 
turtles exist in Britain before that, um, it's, it's very, very difficult to um, work out if it was a native species or not. European pond turtle, that's an interesting one. In the list of extinct species, we're not going to go through these, but, th but there's over there's a dozen beetles um, that have become extinct in the last century. A, a dozen types of beetles that become extinct. Rather, rather interesting there. Um, and this is one thing that we're, we're very aware of. Uh, bees, wasps and ants. Uh, we've got, for example, a number of wasps that have become extinct in the 1900s. They're all in the 1900s, these are, except for one, the uh, a, an apple bumblebee that came in, uh, believed to become extinct in 1864. So out of this list, we've got um, the one, we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight types of bees and wasps that become extinct in the last century. Um, and one as late as 1989. Insecticides have anything to do with that? Definitely. Well, actually, actually, Pete, if we if, if just just have a quick thing about this. Um, we are um, 1934. The mining bee disappeared. Um, 1941, Cullum's bumblebee. Uh, another mining bee in 1941, another type, another mining bee in 1930, um, a digger wasp in 1950. A, a mason wasp in um, 1915, another type of mason wasp in, in 1905, and a bumblebee, <laughs> the short-haired bumblebee in 1989. Now, <laughs> diff it's difficult to work out what's happening with all these, but uh, it might be to do with insecticide, definitely, Pete. Uh, and also, it's to do with fields as well. It's to do with field management. When you think about the 1941, everything was being ripped up uh, for the war effort. Um, just again, quick, um, we've got one species of fly disappeared. We're not, I'm not sure what's happening there. But I think we've got um, over 20 types of butterflies and moths, mainly all going extinct in the 1900s. 1900s as well, we've got two types of dragonflies going um, e extinct, caddisflies going extinct, uh, three types of um, spider become extinct in the 1900s. Um, and for example, we've we've got um, two types of land snails disappearing as well. So th that's, that gives you a roundabout extinction list. There's, there's a few missing from that list, but I just wanted to sort of give you a bit of an overview. Now what I want us to do is do a bit of a screen share. So I'm gonna get this little article on the screen. Um, and it's basically this one here. It says new study questions when the brown bear become extinct in Britain. Now this is a this is a little bit of um bit of history, a bit of archaeology in this one and um and it sort of um gives a gives a nice bit of information. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have this on the screen and I'm gonna read through it and you can read the quotes as well. Why not? Just just share this with me. So here we go. Um, let's get rid of that. Let's just um, screen share screen share there now. Um, and start and drink my tea. Right, good. Okay, here we go. Let's get this one up on there. Good. Um, this this bear thing, we, we, we mentioned that uh, I was a bit vague when we did bears earlier on and the reason why this was coming up. So new study questions when the brown bear became extinct in Britain. New research provides insights into the extinction of Britain's largest native carnivore. So here we go. The presence of the brown bear in Holocene Britain, a review of the evidence. This is Holocene Britain. This is um, post Ice Age Britain. Previous researchers failed to establish when the brown bear became extinct. See, bit of a vague thing there. I can remember that there was talk of brown bears still being here in the 1600s, but my date, my dates earlier on said it was a little bit earlier. Um, and whether or not the remains that have been found are of wild native bears or of bears that have been imported from overseas. Now, that's really interesting. Right. So, yes, interesting. There is also little evidence to determine why the bear became extinct on British shores. That's the point I was making. Exactly. Why did they become extinct? The brown bear was Britain's largest carnivore, yet we know surprisingly little about its history or we haven't bothered both as a wild animal and it, in its re relationship to humans. This is really interesting because what we do see 
and Jessica will tell you this, that because uh, this is her field, what we do see on lots of medieval um, pictures and paintings, we see the bear being used at circuses and events. It's, bears in the British context are well illustrated in the medieval period. So, so they're loved. Oh, they're, they're, they're obviously they're hated by some people, but they're, they're, they're illustrated. Not the, the wolf isn't ever hates the wolf. Um, there has never been a comprehensive review of the evidence of brown bears in Britain. And I believe what we uh, are looking at could show that they uh, were sadly killed off earlier than we previously thought, were they? So that puts another peak on it. So cer certain uh, Dr. Regan has examined the location of the sites where materials have previously been found and the dating evidence and the body parts present to de determine when the bear became extinct and where it was imported from other countries. So the point we're making is that when we find evidence of bears dating to the 1600s, were they brown bears or, or had they been brought in? Uh, previous extinction evidence is unclear and I would suggest two scenarios should be considered that they become extinct in the Neolithic or Bronze Age or in the early medieval period as in the 15 uh, as in the about 500 600 or something like, like that most of the remains that have been discovered from the iron age and the anglo-saxon uh, period so the 700s uh, relates to skins that were included in burials so those those skins it's immediately thought that those skins were actually from bears from our country but they may have been imported oh god whilst there were live animals present during the Roman medieval and post medieval periods may be brought over uh, when they were used for entertainment. These were most certainly imported rather than native animals. That's quite a statement to make. It really is. Interpretations of where um, animals were living can be affected by the use of data from archaeological sites uh, where their remains may have come from different sources. So in other words, what we're saying is that um, we've immediately presumed we do too much presumption in archaeology, don't we? Let's go with that example um, that uh, that lady that was found in a Scandinavian concept um, context in the 1920s she found all these weapons with her and they thought, right, it's definitely a bloke. And they found out it was a woman. Right. So it's all all that sort of. Um, you know, jump into conclusion. For example, determine when wild animals were present in the past is not straightforward, particularly when dealing with the brown bear where furs and live animals were moved and traded over huge distances and over long periods. It's something that we don't think about. So, um, so here we go. In Chinese medicines, in Chinese medicine, they they use um, elephant bone and they they use they, they they use the bones of bear and all the rest of it. So if we find that in our country, does it mean to say that uh, bears and um, elephants are native to this country and were they around when those artifacts are dated from? Interesting question. That the remains of bears in Britain range um, from full skeletons to isolated toes or claws. And the sites range from caves to human cremations. You can imagine those claws being traded across U Europe, in, um, Europe into Britain, interestingly enough. So that's an interesting point. At present, the question of when and why the brown bear became extinct is impossible to answer, as there is still much that we don't know about this distribution. Can I just jump in there? Uh, the old tobacconist shop in Cardiff used to have a bear. You used to go in and there used to be this bear in there, right? So... Um, from you that, well. yeah, you remember it well, Pete. So, oh, Pete, does that does that mean that that bear, right, Pete, is actually a British bear or a continental bear? Obviously, it's a continental bear, but we're presuming that it could be British, and this is the point. So, that must mean that bears still existed in Britain hundred years ago. We've got to be very careful with the evidence, Pete. So, if that body was buried in the ground next week and it's radiocarbon dated to be a hundred odd years old. Is that a British bear or a continental bear? Be very careful with our evidence there, Pete. There are 57 yeah. sites across Britain where clear dates have been determined, but there are an additional 25 that are thought to be Holocene. So you've got 25 there um, <clears throat> are in that context from um, 12,000 years ago into our age. There is also a gap in radiocarbon dates of some 4,000 years from the Mesolithic to the Bronze Age. This is why Roger wants us to do that. Some of this gap is filled with specimens from archaeological sites, but further research is needed to establish bear distribution in the past. 
whilst we can speculate on when the bear became extinct based on existing evidence, we don't you base it on existing evidence. There we go. Uh, more research, particularly on the many undated specimens from caves and fens, is needed before a clearer pattern of where brown bear distribution extinction in Britain emerges. I think that was absolutely massively fascinating, folks. I thought that was absolutely great. That's looking at the archaeology and, and taking it outside the proverbial box. Now, um, I, 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 we haven't got a lot of time now, so I'm just thinking, do I do the Woodland Trust one or I do this one? Um, and this one's not as illustrated and there's a lot more text in there. I don't know which one to do. Um, oh, let's just do this one, uh, the Wildlife Trust. Um, I wanted to do this because it's sort of, it's a bit of an overview and I'll just, I'll just pick what I need from it. So here we go. This, I was talking about the Ice Age and we talked about, we've talked about the forest, we've talked about the vast um, grasslands, the wetlands, the changes, the clue, um, cooler climate um, disappeared while others, um, and in, in, in that cooler climate, some animals disappeared while in that cooler climate, other animals came over. So that's obviously in the past when, when we're looking into the cooler climate now. Uh, it goes here and says, here are 15 of the of UK's extinct animals and the stories behind their loss. Some became extinct thousands of years ago, while others disappeared much more recently. So do you know what I'm going to do? I know we've already done most of this, but it would be good. We've got a nice illustration of an auric there. Lots of people didn't know what an auric looked like. Yeah, that's just an illustration, but it's, that doesn't look as fearsome as some of these huge beasts. Um, it looks quite tame, actually, doesn't it? There we go. Uh, Oryx, there we go. We, we've got an, a wild cow, basically. Um, they were the ancestors of modern cast cattle. As horses and reindeer disappeared from the landscape and moved into cooler environments, Oryx with red deer, um, sago antelopes, roe deer, a wild boar and elk. We didn't mention sago antelopes earlier on because they became extinct a long time ago. They grazed on low lying open flat grasslands, floodplains, birch woodlands and even um, salt marshes. Although larger than modern day cows, much larger, they were hunting, hunted and eaten by bears, wolves and people. It makes it sound easy that, but it wasn't. And I've got to argue again, for that to happen, you would have had to have gone through the full extent of Britain to have actually hunted them to extinction. So ignore that date there. Um, there we go, the apple bumblebee. I mentioned that earlier on. Um, the apple bumblebee loved sand dunes in the UK and was found at a handful of sites in Kent during 1857 and 1864. Um, so we could basically say that obviously the changes within the landscape and, and, do, and one thing I would say in regards to sand dunes and so on is that in many cases another uh, ruminant um, has taken over lots of sand dunes in Britain and they've they've overgrazed. Um, and these type of lovely little creatures, the apple bumblebee, would have undoubtedly become extinct because of the changes with habitat caused by um, those ruminants grazing. For example, the rabbits within that landscape, the apple bumblebee lived. So that's uh, probably human cause, but not directly. Lynx, there you go. After the last ice age, uh, lynxes were widespread across the UK, feeding on roe deer as well as Arctic hares. We mentioned the we, we haven't mentioned the hare at all, um, and the now British extinct collared and Norway lemmings and northern vole. We mentioned them. Latest radiocarbon dating on lynx bones revealed they were still clinging on in northern Britain 1,550 years ago, even as far back as medieval Britain. Huge deforestation led to declining deer populations and nowhere for hunting lynx um, hide to hide. Combined with perse persecution, the lynx slipped away from our countryside. As the lynx re-emerges across parts of Europe, our understanding of how the lynx disappeared in the UK may help determine whether one day it will return to our forest once again. Um, do you, know, do you know my point about this? Um, I, I've not really been as firm. Um, if you're going to reintroduce these types of species in Britain, you've got to reintroduce everything. You've got to reintroduce the bear. You have to reintroduce the beaver. Um, you've got to reintroduce the complete ecosystem. Without in reintroducing the complete ecosystem, the lynxes don't stand a chance. I'm going to say it. 
the wolf is a re so there we go we've got the wolf um earlier dates earlier on we were talking about uh, the wolves gone in packs at least by about the 1300s but we know that they continued on um and it was a very successful predator um, it feasted on a, a myriad of deers, oryx, bison, sager antelope, and other mammals that thrive across the open grassland, and even uh, the humble badger. Uh, in caves, remains of wolves suggest they were uh, domesticated as early pets for protection and help during hunting. When we look at hike, for example, off on the um, Northumberland coastline, line, we do see evidence of dogs, or we think that they are wolves that may have hung around um, human habitation. That's the thing you see when we're looking at domestication of animals within human sites. We always immediately assume that they we've domesticated them, but it, it it's, it's that problem. Have we or haven't they, or were they feasting on human beings? Um, unlike the lynx, the wolf survived in Britain for much longer, less reliant on the disappearing forest for cover, and thrived on red deer, which had adapted to the open Scottish moor. Um, and, you know, I, I mentioned that earlier on, but obviously with the enclosure of the, these landscapes, things would have absolutely changed. And there's one event, if, if we're talking about 1760, they're still wandering around some parts of Scotland. That's um, not just, that's just, that's slightly after um, 1746, which was the Jacobite, the end of the Jacobite um, um, uh, War, um, 16th of April, um, you've got Culloden and uh, 1746 and Scotland changed forever. Um, the old clan-like landscape changed and, and other animals were introduced like extensive grazing of sheep and, and other types of cattle, which would have meant uh, wolves would have got in the way. We've mentioned that elk and we, we've, we've mentioned about the disappearance of the elk. We did that in detail, more about the brown bear. We've done that. Uh, and the great orc, which we haven't, there's the great orc. There's that great orc. Um, the great orc was almost twice the size of this similar looking razor bill, which can still be found at coast breeding sites um, around the UK. Uh, Pete will tell us um, if, he's, if he's seen those um, razor bills on Flatham. I don't think we have, but anyway. No, uh, no. Flightless, the great orc was like the penguin of the northern hemisphere, though from a completely different family. It lived across the North Atlantic and like guillemots, preferred to live in large colonies at just a few sites, including St. Kilda, Outer Hebrides. Eggs were harvested and great orcs killed for their meat and skins. The flightless birds were easy to round up on beaches and rocky ledges on the island. The UK's last great orc was killed in 1840 and just four years later, the species became globally extinct. I think that's very sad. That's, that is obviously a species that human beings have led to extinction, a bit like the dodo and um, other great birds on the island of Madagascar as well. We think it's just Madagascar that suffered these losses, but it's not. We, we've suffered the great orc ourselves in 1840. There, there we go. We're, we're, we're mentioning the bison. Obviously, that's going to be in a pre-sort uh, a pre um, sort of um, um, landscape um, alongside the uh, a pre a pre-12,000 uh, years ago landscape when we've got the, the bridge between um, the, the Ice Age and then we go about 8,500 years ago where uh, bisons, if they were grazing back and forth um, from Europe to Britain, uh, couldn't have done so anymore and their large herds um, were stopped from being so large because the amount of um, landscape that was dominated by trees and you can't have huge herds of bison, uh, they're not going to be able to graze because the trees are taken over. So the, the trees are the, the enemy there. I noticed this in my notes earlier on, that the grey whale, for example, um, and, you know, we, we, we used to have grey whales off our coast, um, and now they, they were, have completely been lost um, off our coast for the past 400 years. Um, we mentioned about butterflies and um, uh, different types of butterflies uh, disappearing because meadows and marshes have been drained. Um, Dalmatian pelican, we did mention this earlier on. We got the European pond terrap um, uh, um, terrapin there. Dalmatian pelican reflects a time when huge areas of the UK um, would have been covered in reed beds, marshes and large shallow stretches of water like the Danube in Romania. 
it was common 12,000 years ago. Um, um, this was a landscape um, started to heat up in Britain. Eventually, 2,000 years ago, the drainage of these wetlands alongside hunting and distribution led to the extinction of the pelican. Dalmatian pelicans thrive in northern Europe, but um, they're not to be found here today. But we've got cranes that have come back. So this, this, is, a, this is one year. European pond terrapin, well, pond turtle, as we referred to it earlier on, thousands of years ago, was home to um, uh, over a dozen reptiles and amphibians. Well, actually more than that. Many now have become extinct because of changes in habitat. Um, so we've got the European, it's saying that the pond terrapin, terrapin um, become extinct 8,000 years ago. I said it because earlier in my earlier notes become extinct 3,000 years ago. Uh, but what's happening with these terrapins in regards to when monks kept them um, on estates in Britain in the 1300s. Were, were they some left over from the, these, these native um, um, reptiles or were they reintroduced? Difficult to say. We mentioned about beetles earlier on, changes within the landscape, um, the white stork as well. Just over 600 years ago, the last pair of white storks nested in Britain. They had suffered from hunting and the loss of their watery habitats. They, they enjoy large open marshlands like, like the fen-like landscapes of Peterborough and obviously the marshy landscape uh, of Somerset. Um, and we're obviously disappeared 600 years ago, re-establishing now. Um, there we go, common tree frog. I, I can't believe that. I, I was really unaware of this tree frog. The, the common tree frog, the last was recorded um, in 1646 um was able to survive in our cold and sometimes freezing climate archaeological remains of this beast go back thousands of years i love that one it did we, we it was still here in um 1646 and now it's gone a breeding colony um existed in the new forest until the late 1980s and may have clung um to life in the british countryside since the 1600s Changing habitat and collectors saw the end of this unprotected species in Hampshire. What the hell? Unsuccessful reintroduction. Re, you can't really reintroduce amphibians like this. It's just really difficult. It, it, it's, it's about this delicate ecosystem. Unsuccessful reintroductions of colonies in other parts of Britain have been doomed from the start, comprising different species of tree uh, frogs or uh, released into woodland rather than scrubland. So we don't really understand what's going on. So um, I just want, obviously, other animals, that's another issue, um, I, I, I'm slowly going extinct or alarming rates, but I, I just wanted to share that with you today about um, these different animals that, that we once had in Britain. When, when, we, when we come across these animals um, in, in the lectures, for example, um, then, then we know what's, what's going on. And this, this article here, if you want to look at that, uh, is from the Woodland Trust. It's, it's the, the UK uh, bringing back some of these animals, um, like, like the osprey, um, bringing back the lynx, bringing back wolves and bears to Britain. Yeah, um, I'm all for it if you can, if you've got everything, you know. Um, bringing back the, the elk and moose. We don't have these types of landscapes. Capercaillie, yeah, that's that'd be a good one. Um, so we've got the Capercaillie in Scotland. So that's good. We we'll look at that bird. It looks, it looks really not. Sh it shouldn't be from here, but it is. It is, you know. Um, love it. Um, beautiful bird. Um, and uh, um, a pine martin. There it is. But, but I, I think I th pine martin is not extinct, but it's become close. Uh, I, I, I'm all for. I'm all for everything to do with Mother Nature. But one thing I've learned is that Mother Nature doesn't come as easy as going out, um, giving every family in Britain a tree to plant, because most people are going to be planting these trees, they're going to be dooming that tree to just um, wilt over and die in the garden. Um, we don't have a clue about planting trees in Britain. Um, unless we start learning what planting trees means, um, it, we're gonna, it's, it's going to fail. And, and we, what we've got to do, we've got to have a complete ecosystem before we can start re-establishing nature. And the archaeology of our world uh, can help us understand what to do. Uh, we just can't go out there planting trees everywhere. Anyway, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop now and... Um
Um, actually, I've, I've just said I've just said something that David Attenborough said, um, or I think it was David Attenborough. Um, um, somebody, I'm not sure it was David. Some some um, ecologist said very recently um, that you know unless you know what's go how to plant a tree and where to plant a tree is is, is absolutely pointless. Anyway, so okay, thanks, any Charles. questions? Roger. Oh, see you Please tomorrow, Roger. Anyway, if you yeah. haven't got any questions, Roger, I'll see you Raj. tomorrow. Take care. Bye, Bye Roger. Yeah. Cheers, to Roger, Bye, baby. Raj. With me yeah. and Roger, I, I didn't take the mickey out of Roger at all today. But uh, hold on, quick. Roger, <laughs> um, you, you yeah. need a haircut, you bald-headed coot. Right, yes. Carry on, quick. Um, Roger, um, you know I love you lots, and I can't wait to see you. Um, I'm being nice to him, and uh, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, Roger. Where's my scenery? See ya. <laughs> um, he has one the last word. Pete, have the last <laughs> word. What do you want to say, Pete? Oh, I saw I saw a gay Viking today. Yeah, but but it wasn't gay. It was homosexual. <laughs> but no. um, <laughs> That was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. Thank you, Pete. That was good. Uh, yeah. We we needed to do that today because we're going to keep coming across yeah. all of those. So, uh, um, yeah, um, the Sega antelope. We didn't mention that, but it's a bit, bit of an earlier context. But we find weird bones occasionally in archaeology, and this, this explains it all. Anyway, thanks for that, Pete. Anything you'd like to say, Margaret? Oh, bloody hell, she's got her mouth shut. Magra's not even there. You muted. Oh, right. Well, that's good. Drina, um, anything you'd like to say? No, no, thank you. Magra, are you going to come was, back? <laughs> yeah, I was just saying about we're in danger of losing our red squirrels to the grey ones. Mm -hmm. And they say by introducing the pine martins, they would keep the grey squirrel population down. Oh, oh, oh. That is my point. Oh. That is that that is my point because yeah. um, there yeah, there are ecosystems the that yeah. <laughs> there are ecosystems within ecosystems, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm you're, guilty you're, of feeding a pair of grey squirrels. Oh no! Hey, tut, tut, tut. Okay, I'm guilty of feeding a pair of grey squirrels. They're in my I'm garden all the time. Well, well, I'll put it this way: it's Barry Pete. That that's our that's our equivalent of a red squirrel. You can get away with that. Um, the, the the point is uh, ecosystems in ecosystems. So animals that live in trees, like the, like the pine martin, um, and you you've got, for example, the lick, lynx, and you've got the um, the red and the grey squirrel. Um, you know, that's that's one ecosystem that you can balance, right? Um, and and then what you then need to do. Is um, you could say you could argue that lynx is more of a, a ground dwelling, but but it it, it does rely upon trees. Um, you can you can start balancing ecosystems, and then when you've got the trees, more trees, you can start introducing um, ground animals like um, the wild boar. But then you need something to deal with the wild boar. The lynx ain't going to do it by itself, and you might need a bear, or you might need. Um, uh, you, you might need a wolf, for example, but but it, it's all it's all about balance, um, and it, it's slowly, slowly, and you can't just do it overnight. And then the point, the message with the um, with the European tree frog in Britain that that's that's the obvious message. Um, you can't introduce a European tree frog if you don't have the right trees and the habitat habitat for it to live in. It's okay to introduce a lynx in Wales, but it's, if it's not the right trees, it's going to die. Hmm. We keep getting just about every other week in our local paper giant cat spotted, you <laughs> panther like cat, and they're always a very blurry picture of something that doesn't look that big in the distance, and I just. <laughs> Wonder is it something that's escaped from a zoo? Is it just good headlines? I wonder if they appear in other parts of the country as well. The beast I, I, of Bodmin Moor comes to mind. Exactly. 
Uh, well, they do. They do escape quite a lot. I mean, yeah. I looked into this about 20 years ago, and in one year, 120 large cats escaped from oh, private collections. Yeah. Well, but oh, they're yeah. never seen they close up, though, are they? They're always very blurry and a long way away. But yeah. that's 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 quite that's natural. That's the nature of the beast, isn't it? It is, it? yeah. They keep, yeah. My dad saw one over at Yelland. Yeah. A, a big black cat. Uh, and he said it was definitely a big black cat. Not not a Labrador or anything like that. You'd think they'd be finding more evidence, wouldn't you? Well, that's that's my problem. But they're they're you know, they're very difficult to spot and trace. So yeah, but I mean, they defecate. You'd think they would find stuff in the woods and think, oh, this is unusual. Yeah, you don't find much cat poo anywhere, though, do you? So no, I mean, it's, it's you would see it, um, don't they? You would see the carcasses of their kills around, wouldn't you? Well, they do get a, quite a lot of sheep with damaged necks with oh, there we are. holes yeah. and things, you know. Yeah, and they, they do. Yeah. I, they I don't, blame dogs, though, for that. They do, okay. yeah. It's, it's, it, I would have thought there should be more evidence, and I would have thought they should be able to track them easier than they exactly. ever do. So, mm. exactly. but, um, And what ones that have got tracking devices on them before they, they, they escape from a zoo in the first place? No, that's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and, and the thing is, right, um, Claire does disappear from time to time, and I, I do believe she yeah, wears a black true. cat suit. Yeah, it be, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, uh, it's the type of thing that she does. Apparently, hangs around. She does. She is known to hang around in caves looking for artifacts. That's true. In a black yeah. <laughs> Claire the Black that, Panther. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, right. So, who have we got left? Anne, do you want to say anything? No, no, thank you. I don't think and I do believe really, if, if really you, interesting, a wonderful <laughs> list. Uh, oh, it was know. it was a wonderful list, and uh, the only one that we haven't heard anything from tonight is Pat. Is there anything you would like to say, Pat? <laughs> um, you think pretty oh, good tonight. I found it interesting, though. Thank you very much. My 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 absolute pleasure. My absolute pleasure. Well, on that note, we're going to call it night ten o'clock. How the hell do I manage a two and a half hour lecture? But you know, we we more or less start. We only started ten minutes into it anyway. So anyway, if there's no other questions, it's been a delight having you tonight. And um, I'm going to, if no nothing else needs to be said, I'm going to say good night to Pat, Andy, um, Anne, Gina, uh, Roger, Margaret, uh, Pete, and Claire, who's already gone, and Jess. So nothing else. I will see you next week, folks. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Bye. 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 Night. Oh, give my love to Sandra. Yeah, she's gone. Oh, that's it. Andy's gone. Okay, go on, everyone. Anyway, thanks for liking and uh, subscribing, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. That was a really invigorating one. Little people. Oh? No, they just nicked my milk. Anyway, take care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.